art of getting optimal results. It's not just about placing implants accurately. It's also what you do with the tissue, how you manage it. And you will see that the, most of the things that I do are actually very, very simple. Very simple to do. They require a little bit more effort, spending a few extra minutes, but it's going to help. Because you have a lot of options when you have a healed implant site. I'm not talking about immediate placement where the soft tissue outline has already been predefined. I'm talking about the healed implant site. There are different ways to access the site. Okay, we are we have an option to go with a crestal incision in the middle of the crest or a crestal incision more to the palate. And the advantage is you'll mobilize more of the soft tissue towards the buccal, and you're gaining more attached and keratinized tissue, you're gaining more bulk. And for a certain indication, and it's mostly for the aesthetic, don't, don't use this papilla sparing technique in the non-aesthetic zone. It actually makes absolute no sense. Unless you're dealing with an adjacent implant, you don't want to expose any threads. That may be an option, but really the papilla sparing is mostly for the aesthetic zone. What's the idea here? You make an incision more to the palate, create two vertical releasing incisions, and reflect the full thickness flap, and then you have access to the site. And of course, we have the flapless approach or the punch approach, and we have the half punch technique, okay? All of these are options. Now, we don't always have the luxury of having our dream patient come to us, right? This is a patient that has a huge ridge, and there's no doubt that you can go with a flapless approach. I almost don't need to look at the scan, but if I do, you would see abundance of bone, and that's a dream patient. But more for, more for a uh, more reasonable patient, if you have two to three millimeters of attaching keratinized tissue, that's enough for a flapless approach. Now, here's what's so interesting. And as you can notice, I, I'm obsessed with photography. I take so many pictures because number one, it helps me with my teaching, but it also helps me learn about what's happening in real life. Because in this case, I went flapless because I had enough attaching keratinized tissue, but I still had the resorption of the ridge. Okay, this is all flapless. So the fact that you're going flapless does not mean that you're not going to lose bone. How interesting is that? Okay, I don't want you to be shocked or disappointed. That's just what they call the real life. Okay, that's the sad truth of about ridges. Your ridges are going to start melting away and you'll get deficiencies even if you go flapless, okay? We need two to three millimeters of attached keratinized tissue, okay? I just gave you the rule. Now, what does it mean? It's not as simple and nobody ever talked about it. I actually never really thought about it until I started taking picture pictures and mentoring dentists on how to do these procedures properly. Because if you look at the ridge, if you look at the ridge, the ridge is not a two-dimensional object. It has three dimensions, okay? Look carefully. I'll give you some anatomical landmarks. We have the mucogingival junction. We have the border between the occlusal part of the ridge and the buccal part of the ridge. And we have where the occlusal part of the ridge connects with the palatal pal part of the ridge, okay? So there are actually three components. Remember the compartment technique? <laughs> it's kind of connected to that, and it's. I think this is where I got it from. So when I talk about the two to three millimeter rule, okay, so we have a buccal and occlusal component, the two, three millimeter rule of soft tissue is from the transition line, not from the mucogingival junction. And a lot of us, including myself in the past, are failing with that. So if you look at this more strict criteria, you will notice that most cases need to be flapped. So I'm totally with Kayvon. He's flapping most or all of his guided cases because there's not enough, not enough attached and keratinized tissue. Okay? So I'm giving you something to think about. Okay? You need two to three millimeters 
from the line where the occlusal part of the ridge transitions to the buccal. And if it's a little bit complicated, just think about it, okay? 